Hi everyone, it's Deacon Kevin Ripley here from up in Green Bay. It's a joy to be able to share a reflection with you today. But first, just a quick update as to where I'm at and what's, what I'm up to. So Mundelein Seminary sent all of us seminarians back to our own dioceses on March 13th. And I came up to a house of formation that we have in Green Bay, where I'm living with all the other seminarians for our diocese. And I completed my studies for the year online, much like everybody else in school has been doing. Um, I just finished last Friday with my studies. It's been a blessing to be here with the other men in prayer and community. It really has been a blessing. However, my ordination to the priesthood has been delayed until July. So I look forward to that a bit further down the road now, and especially to be able to share a Mass with you someday when I can come down to Ascension to do that as a priest. And also a happy Mother's Day to all of those mothers out there, whether with children of your own or with uh, spiritual children or mothers in spirit, please know that you are very much appreciated. And I also uh, personally pray today, especially for, for those who desire to have children but haven't been able to uh, have children in their lives. And I pray that the Lord would draw them near to himself in the way that he desires. Regardless, hopefully you are able to find some creative ways to celebrate the mothers closest to you during this time. As you know, mothers play a big role in passing on the faith to the next generation. Even spiritual motherhood, I believe, for, for those who mentor and educate others in the faith, is a powerful, powerful force in the church and in society. Motherhood. I'm deeply grateful to my own mom and to our mother Mary in heaven for all the care and love that they've given me over the years. I think it's fair to say that mothers are essential to any society. According to Catholic social teaching, the family itself is the fundamental building block of society. So speaking of what's essential, last week I was driving through a neighborhood and I saw one of those signs that says, thank you to all of our essential workers. And of course I echo that for sure. Like I'm so grateful for uh, everyone who is continuing to have to work to keep the things we need going um, that are so important. However, as you know, there was great debate about what is essential. There's still debate as things are changing about that. What essential services, um, which ones do we need? What, what ones can be put on hold for the time being? What jobs can be done from home or behind, cl behind closed door? And I'm sure those decisions have influenced many of your lives. But we've also been forced to ask the question for ourselves on a daily basis, what is essential? What is essential for me to do? What is essential for me to live in this time? That's the same question that the apostles were asking in the early church, as we saw in the Acts of the Apostles, as the church began to grow, they needed to focus on what is most essential. How fitting today that our, our reading from Acts includes uh, the deacons, right? I've been, I've been gone for some time, so it's a joy to be back for, for this uh, reflection. But the first reading, we see the ordination of the first seven deacons in the early church. They were ordained to be at service, specifically for a cross-section of widows, of mothers, right, who were being neglected at the time. Uh, the apostles saw this as, some, as, as an essential task that needed to be carried out but they needed to have someone else manage that because they themselves had an essential mission. To be an apostle means, right, to be sent, uh, to be sent to spread the word of God to all nations. So that was essential to their identity as apostles. And so they had to rethink how the church was doing things because times were really changing even for them. So in changing times, what is essential? You know, every time something is taken away uh, from our lives, I think we can convince ourselves that at least we have this or that. For example, when the pandemic 
all began, I remembered thinking, well, at least I'll be living closer to home. That'd be nice. Then when we were ordered to stay at home, I thought, well, at least I'm living with you know, some guys and can, can see, and can continue my studies online. At least we can go for walks outside and we can go out to buy groceries. Then my ordination was delayed a couple months. Well, at least more people will be able to come at that time. Then stores recently began running out of meat. I really like meat. Well, at least we have food to eat on the table. At least I have a place to live. At least I'm healthy. You see, one could go on and on and on until everything is taken away. Coming up in this chapter of Acts, that if, you were, if we were to continue in Acts, we would come across uh, a little bit more about St. Stephen and how after he had gone out proclaiming the word and doing mighty deeds, he himself would be stripped of everything. Seemingly, he would be stoned to death. But as he looked to heaven, his last words would be, Lord Jesus, I commend my spirit. At that point, it is clear that for the Christian, what is most essential is Jesus. In the gospel, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is essential to our life. Especially in times when it's not for certain where we are going or what God is doing in the grand picture of all of this. We hear the disciples say, Lord, we do not know where, where, where you are going, right? You might be watching this and acknowledge in your heart that there's some trouble in our hearts sometimes. I think in these past weeks, we've all experienced troubled hearts in different ways. With what's going on with the virus, of course, with what's going on in politics, with violence, poverty around the world. A lot of things can bring our hearts trouble. But Jesus, what does he say? Jesus reassures us, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. To believe is to trust. For as the psalm says, Truly, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, who hope in that love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Now, we're experiencing a pestilence, but you could easily replace famine for pestilence or pandemic. Again, who should we go to with troubled hearts? The one who is essential. We should go to the one who is essential. St. Peter in his letter says, Come to him. You are chosen. For God is the only one whose doors are always open. We have 24-7 access to him in prayer. And God wouldn't have it any other way. For he made us for relationship with himself. He made us to love, to know, and to serve God in this life, no matter what this life looks like, and to be with him forever in the next. That is what's most essential. So thank you for listening. Please pray for me. I'm going uh, to be in silence for the whole next week as part of my final preparations for priestly ordination. I have to go on a silent retreat with some conferences that I'll be hearing over the week. And so it's really uh, a week on vacation or a week silent with Jesus, giving, to that, giving that time to the Lord. So please pray for me. I'll be praying for you most definitely. And may God bless you uh, abundantly in these times.